Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new podcast. It's called Pair, Pairs on a Pod. I've already stuffed it up, but that's going to be basically the tone of this podcast. We have two very special guests, but first of all, my co-host guest, who's going to be the co-host for permanent permanency throughout for the uh, for the podcast. His name's Jack Hudson. You'd know him from all social medias. His face is everywhere. Jack, it's good to have you on, mate. Face is everywhere. That's a bit dangerous, Ant. But uh, yeah, it's good to start a new project. We've been talking about this for years. It's been yeah. years, mate. Yeah, it has been years, and um, we finally put it into fruition thanks to uh, a little bit of inspiration coming from Rocky and Faz coming out earlier this week, and I thought we'd do better. But the way we're kicking it off, we're going to do it better than anyone. And there's no better person to get it than the personality they represent, Port Adelaide. His name's Timmy Geneva. Timmy, it's good to have you on board, mate. Hey, great to be here. But if I didn't know it was video, I would have done the hair. I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just audio, so my apologies to all the viewers. That's all right. None of us have done our hair, so it's all good. <laughs> I can't remember last time I did my hair, if I'm honest. I like uh, well, you shaved your beard a couple of weeks ago, so... yeah. Uh, that was getting out of control. And a lot of people, it was quite controversial at the time. A lot of people <laughs> weren't huge when the beard went. He looked like he was four again. So it was good <laughs> to have uh, <laughs> it was good to have young baby Hutto with us. Uh, Timmy, you're joining us today for a very special reason. We're celebrating the life and the great uh, representation that was Russell Lee. But this weekend, Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne at the Adelaide Oval. It's going to be a commemorative game. The great man himself. Um, what do you make of the game, mate? What's going to be happening this week? And uh, what are you looking forward to to celebrate the great life that was Russell Ebert? Yeah, first of all, I, th- I think it's a nice touch that came out yesterday with the guys Guernseys with the little number seven patch on it uh, that looks like the locker. I really like that. Look like the back panel of the Guernsey. So that's a that's a really nice touch straight away. And I think if you're, you know, maybe feeling a bit sore, a bit sorry for yourself and the game needs to be won, maybe just have a little look down at the uh, number seven. I reckon it'll keep driving you. So... That's a really nice touch straight away. But, yeah, look, I'm not sure what the club's got planned, but I think just the fact that they want all of the Port Adelaide people to just come to the game and celebrate the life and the fantastic commitment that, you know, Russell made to Port Adelaide, but also everybody he came in touch with. And and that was the thing that really shone through, I think. I, I said the one thing you can't get back in life is time, and it's the most valuable thing you'll have. And as you get older, you get a lot more aware of it. And with Russell, he was just so generous with his time. All And that with everybody he met, and he wanted to make them feel better than him. And I loved it. And uh, to watch it, to, to be involved in it, to be right alongside him when he was doing it, uh, it's a great life lesson. Hello. Uh, tell us about um, what you're thinking this week. We've had this, uh, we've had this penciled in since the fixture was announced, and can already tell by Timmy G's uh, excitement that uh, it's going to be a big game. Um, tell us your thoughts, mate. Oh, I'm itching to get back, um, not just um, because it's a full house at Adelaide Oval for the first time, but because we are celebrating the life of a great human being. Uh, I had 30 minutes with Russ in an interview, and it definitely ran over time. I had um, Lucas <laughs> at Port knocking on the door going, yeah, hurry up, mate, he needs to get on. <laughs> so... Um, but we yeah, spoke for half an hour going through his life, um, talking about like growing up, playing footy, going about some of the highlights, um, playing yeah under Foss. And it was just incredible. And I still remember um, what he said at the end of the interview that he said that I thought I'd done well. And it's something that's lived with me since then. And it was um, just yeah, sort that, of... That won't happen tonight, Jack. <laughs> I'd be disappointed if it did to me. <laughs> um, but like, because he, like, my pa was so close to me, like, um, so close, and that he got me into football and Port Adelaide growing up. Um, he was his idol, and Mum always told me a story that going to her grandparents' house, so my um, great grandparents, um, in the china cabinet there was the nice china, and there was a photo of Russell Ebert. <laughs> as highly regarded as he was um, in our family as big Port fans. So it's great to hopefully see a full packed house and um, the club's going to do some amazing tributes. But, 
Yeah, that's probably my story. But Timmy, I'm sure you've got some absolute rippers, mate. Um, you just it just reminded me of something, Jack. That you know, when Russell was playing and and winning medals and and all the rest of it, it the, the the club would bring out commemorative moments, and it'd be either a port or a, a champagne or something like that. And you you'd walk into a Port Adelaide house in the seventies. And inevitably, you'd look at the China cabinet and dead set, there was a, the bottle of port or there was the uh, the shield or something like that with his face on it or the you know the magnets that used to mm. um, go onto the fridge or the, the badges that you could buy from the caravan. So there was always this Russell Ebert uh, paraphernalia going around. And again, just uncanny, you guys had set this meeting up and I walked in uh, yesterday to see one of our board members, Kathy Nagel, and uh, went to see her at uh, Western Hospital. And as I walked into her office, swing out in the door, there's this unbelievable photo of Russell. And I, I said straight away, I said, where did you get that? It's, it's brand spanking new. Looks like it's oh. just come off the printer. And she said, uh, this guy I, I know, he gave it to me. He's got a collection of unbelievable stuff. But this wow. is, And I said, well, I can tell you what year that is. That is 1985. And I remember it because of the Guernsey and where the Standard Chartered logo was. And I said, and the other reason I remember it is because it was the first year that I was allowed to have a photo for <laughs> sale. Now, you know, I bought all 20 of them, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that was my first ever. And I was that excited because it, you looked up in the van and there is, you know, Martin Leslie, there's Russell E, but there's Kim Kinnear, and then your photos there. It was just so exciting. As I said, sales weren't great. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you actually bought them all? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, well, I don't know there was any made, to tell you the truth, but I do remember <laughs> seeing the one. But it was just amazing. And, that, and that's what Russell did, I think, for people. I know personally when he won his fourth McGarry medal, I was 14, and my mate said, hey, we should buy one of those posters because they made this commemorative caricature of Russell. And I think that was the incident where Big Bob went arm over Turkey on the on the stage uh, after he'd won it. And he oh, was trying cool. to unveil this little scroll that was this little photo caricature of Russell. And uh, we, my mate got hold of a couple and said, um, well, we're from Mansfield Park, so let's just say he got hold of them, all right? And... <laughs> And we've ended up taking two buses into town because his sports store was right at the end of King William Road near South Terrace. And uh, we walked in there as two innocent lads thinking, oh, geez, it'd be great if we could see him. Rocked up there who I looked at the guy and I, I thought, gee, this bloke, he looks like Russell, you know, and said, you know, like, we got these posters. Could he come out and sign them? And uh, it was Craig Ebert. And Craig, oh. Craig was just a young man himself uh, just starting, you know, doing some hours at the shop. He went out the back, got Russell. Russell comes out and, and signs our little, our wow. little caricature, which was oh, a, a real big thrill for two 14-year-olds. That's amazing. Oh, that's It's funny, too, because you say, like, growing up and me being you know, early, mid-20s um, and I'm feeling old at mid-20, I won't lie. Uh, look, the, body, the, body is, the body is really feeling it. But um, the, the way you said it before, like, the, you know, you only got time... And then that's uh, such a crucial thing in our lives to be young and then growing up with an idol like Russell. I mean, I grew up with Brad and, and Brett playing for Port Adelaide, you know, Brett, Brad wearing number seven and Brett wearing 33 mega head. You know, it was such a great, well, it's such a great thing to see that Ebert's were still playing for Port Adelaide. And we see this weekend, Xavier Dersma um, putting away the number seven for the weekend. I mean, he might not even play anyway, but to have that special gesture, it shows that he meant a lot to a lot of people, even if you knew him or he didn't. I think, the, yeah, you're right. It's it's one of those things where you go, you feel like you know him, even if, if you haven't met him. And uh, it's sort of like with the recent passing of Shane Warne. Mm. I never, ever crossed paths with Warney ever. But if you said, do you, do you know him? You feel like you do. You know, you feel like you've had a beer with him because he's that sort of character. He's been very uh, giving with himself as well. But you know, and Russell himself, though, I just think... He just was a, had the ability to just make sure everybody in the room felt, like I said, better than he did. But, you know, when you were saying about the, the generational stuff, that's fantastic that both, you know, Brad and Brett were able to play for the power as well and just keep that family lineage going. It's a, it's a, it's a nice story to have. And we've had such famous families in the Port Adelaide history that you just go. And the great thing about Brad, but he's, he's half obst 
as well as Ebert. So mm. it's a, it, that's a real good bloodlines. I tell you what, get that at the yearling sales. <laughs> <laughs> That'll cost you a mint. But uh, it's just fantastic that that continues on and just makes that bond all the way from, you know, Ken Ops played, oh, geez, I think he played in the 1920s. So you've got that lineage going all the way through for 100 years. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's that's insane. Hutto, I think, um, you know, we grow up, now and just seeing all these players and we're going to get to obscure players later on and so many that have influenced us whether they've played one game or 400 you know it's it's amazing that russell even in our generation can have such an impact exactly and i think that was one of the like one of the things i did have my bucket list like as a journo and russ was up there he was up there in the top five because i had interviewed some of my heroes and so i was like now i want to interview one of pars and that was one of the most surreal things. And I've said to many people before, I'm a, lot, a big believer in sort of how things happen. Like I've always been linked to music when it comes to the afterlife and stuff like that. And after I left, my pa's funeral song came on the radio and I was just, I just remember sobbing. So it meant a lot to me in a lot of different ways um, in terms of chatting with Russ. But I didn't realize the sort of impact um, that it had on my life when, like it all happened last year and just but he was a fighter he was an incredible bloke like uh, and it's just surreal and it's so good to see all the tributes coming out and a lot of people saying amazing things about him um especially last year and especially this week as well yeah i think um and it's gonna bring up a lot of emotion from um even last year and i remember i think we're supposed to go out for dinner that night and i just had to pause and stop and say you know what let's push back dinner half an hour i've just got to sit back i even sat in my car and thought you know what I might just get some kfc and go home and and um and not worry about going out to dinner but uh timmy I, you mentioned a lot of great stories that you've had is there one in particular that does stand out from the rest that really just makes you sit back and go gee russ what a man Oh, yeah, well, I told a couple at the funeral, <laughs> which uh, I, it, it's, it was just such fun. I, what I loved about him was the fact that if you got him behind closed doors, that's when his sense of humour would really come to the fore and you, he would be that larrikin, that country boy larrikin that he, you heard about in a lot of the stories that came out, especially from his brother. But, um, you know, when I was again, young and just starting to make the, the A-grade side, um, I was, yeah, desperately, I used to think I had to be at my absolute best because I'd, I'd, I didn't have a lot of uh, natural ability. And so a lot of the younger boys would head off into town after the game and I'd hear Russell talking to the older blokes like Tim Evans and, um, you know, Kim Kinnear and Steve Curtis and these sort of guys and Bomber. And he'd say, um, anybody up for a card night at my joint, you know? And uh, they'd go, yeah, yeah, all right, Russell, you know, we'll have dinner here and then come to your joint, right, right. And I'd say, can I come? Like, <laughs> 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 I fanboyed him, you know, and I'm playing, oh. I'm playing with him. And I said, can I come? So I'd go, and I had no money. So I'd go, and I'd watch him play cards, and I'd be sort of watching telly, but I'd be running around the table, and then I'd go, uh, I'd see Timmy Evans nearly finish his beer, and I'd say, yeah, Timmy, um, you want another one? He'd go, oh, that'd be lovely. Thanks, Timbo. Yeah, they give me the empty. I'll run off and get another one. I was like a five-year-old kid running around the table. <laughs> and automatically, I'd watch the dynamics and the fun and the banter and all that. And then I looked under the table. I thought, what the hell's Russell got on his leg? Russell had a massive uh, ice pack on his oh. leg. And so he'd sit there. He's playing cards, but he'd have ice pack and he would ice every 20 minutes, 20 on, 20 off, 20 on, 20 off. And I sort of was only 18 going on 19. I thought straight away, gee, he's 34, 35 years of age, still the ultimate professional, still having fun playing cards with his mates, but wouldn't let go of, I don't want to miss a game and I'm going to make sure I do the right thing. It was incredible. That's it was insane. amazing to watch that. So I always learn from that moment that, you know, when, and as you say, Anthony, as you get, older um <laughs> I, I knew that <laughs> i knew that when i got hurt that i would say yep yeah, cheerio to everybody else i'm straight home and i get the ice packs on 20 on 20 off 20 on 20 off 
to make sure I recovered to come up for a game. And yeah, his record for resilience was quite phenomenal. I think he only missed a few in his his last year. That was probably the most games he ever missed. Missed, but he barely missed one or two a year. He was very resilient, but he did the right thing. So the professionalism I picked up real early, um, which was great for me uh, to, to witness. But I think the other moment for me, which was an out of body moment, was my first league game where I actually got on the oval. So it's I think my third game. I'm playing Albert and Noble. We're playing Sturt. It's 1984. I'm 18 and I'm standing in the forward pocket at the northern end. And I just had this moment before the ball bounced and I just looked and saw Tim Evans and then I saw Russell Ebert and I sort of thought that I'm in the cheer squad. And I was just standing there staring until Tim Evans turned around and said, Get the fuck out of my space. <laughs> <laughs> so I took off in a panic and Russell ran around and he grabbed hold of me by both shoulders and said, you concentrating, boy? You concentrating? I'm going, yes, Mr. David. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> it was unbelievable. It was an out-of-body experience. Didn't know it was coming. And honestly, you'd think you'd, you, know, you just can't believe you're in the team, you know? So it was a great day. Kick four. Had a great day. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad for sitting in the full forward spot yeah, exactly. just, just crumbing <laughs> off the big fella oh wow that's kick four and it wasn't even you it's just your out of body experience it's my so out of body fun. experience exactly yeah and what, was that? Me. <laughs> what was that about natural ta- talent Timmy exactly oh dear no. but that was uh, that was an amazing day and it was just that moment where you just realised geez, I'm I'm now a grown up and I'm out on the oval. Jeez, that's 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 incredible to hear that you know someone like that can get, create an out of body experience. I wish a few of my teammates down at St Paul's would have the same thing when I'm on the field. <laughs> but, <you know. laughs> um, oh, beg to differ, we do. But um, Timmy, we'll focus. Let's go to this weekend in particular. I mean, we don't know exactly what the club's got planned. A few things. I've mentioned a couple, Xavier Dersmer and the patch on the Guernsey, which is fantastic. Um, what else would you like to see maybe to uh, create that awesome feeling that the fans can have an impact in commemorating Russell Eagle this weekend? Look, you know, because the Adelaide Oval is so um, well-equipped these days, I would imagine that the tributes on the big screens will be quite significant. I think that that's probably where most of the emotion will be drawn and uh, the way they'll be able to capture some of those um, memories of Russell and just, you know, when he speaks sometimes, and I love the uh, the Onwards to Victory um, uh, documentary that was done for the 150th because it's just fantastic to hear, you know, himself and Jeff Motley and John Carl and, you know, when you're able to sort of flash back and hear Foss and Bob Quinn speak, it's just... You, you, when they speak, you listen. And, you know, I know at the end, Russell was talking about, you know, you never were able to get too far ahead of yourself. And he said, because if you did, you come upstairs here. And then he said, and they quickly put you back in your place. <laughs> and I just loved it because that was typical of Port Adelaide supporters and they want success. And when they don't get it, they tell you. But when they do, they're the first to pat you on the back. And, Russell knew that and he loved it that he put it across so well and so um, eloquently to the to the camera for that documentary. And I'd love to see moments like that also, but, you know, the work he did with the community, the work he did for Novita was outstanding. And, you know, um, I'd often see his wife die um, pushing around one of the... Uh, one of the people from Novita just, you know, donating her time as well. And you'd catch her in West Lakes, have a bit of a yarn and say, oh, I'll spend the day with, you know, Peter at the moment and all that. And you just go, what brilliant people, you know, yeah. just fantastic. You know, they, they their kids were off their hands, so they were putting time into other people and it's just just amazing. So, yeah, you'll get a snapshot of all of that. Um, and as, you know, Tammy said at the funeral, you know, he was, you know, he was God, he was Russ, he was this, but to, to us, he was dad and, it was a bloody good one. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think you said it perfectly as well. You know, God, Dad, he's uh, just a figure, I think, in so, many's, uh, so many eyes. And um, I can't wait to get there this weekend and, and celebrate Russ and 
hopefully Hutto, it's a uh, it's a win because we don't want to go zero and two. No, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't think we will. I don't no. think we will. Um, I don't even think that way. Nah, no, definitely nah. not. No losing mentality. I think. I right. think oh, we're we're a lot stronger than Hawthorne, and we didn't. We just injuries just caught up with us against Brisbane, and that's a notorious ground that we just. Don't usually play well at, so I was very surprised we're up at three quarter time. Just in the sense that, considering how much we'd struggled in the past, yeah, we're but, one step away from winning. That's what yeah, it is, we're exactly. And they'll they'll believe that they'll do it next year. Oh yeah, I'm I'm well, I'm hopeful for that. That'd be amazing. Mm. Um, and I think I think this weekend we'll knock the Hawks off and watch Jezza Finlayson kick it back. Good, oh, love it. Jezza. Well, you say next year, Timmy. I just, I really just hope we don't go up to the Gabba next year at all. So um, <laughs> <laughs> let's hope we don't, we don't travel up there. But uh, Timmy, you know we're an, you know we're an interstate side, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Blame at Marvel. That's where we win. Blame yeah, at Marvel. Correct. Um, what are your thoughts on this week? Uh, obviously, with a few injuries and playing Hawthorne, um, what's a key takeaway for Port fans to think? Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty confident we'll get the job done. Yeah, well, I think the one thing that we've been able to show over the last couple of seasons is there's there's a fair bit of depth there and the guys that have come in have been able to do their job and play pretty well. So I think um, that's what's going to have to happen this week. We've still got um, pretty much our midfield intact. So that's that's a good that's a good thing. And making sure that, you know, maybe Xavier uh, doesn't come up, but... Um, I think young Sin would come in and, and actually play a, a role, you know, in that sort of wing half forward area pretty well. I really liked his trial form. Um, what I think he gave to us was just a bit more explosion and also he's such a long kick. He always mm-hmm. looks long first. And I reckon he turned that game against the Crows at Richmond Oval when he came on. He actually took off. First kick was 55 metres long, went over the back of the pack, we got a goal. And I go, well, that's the sort of thing that you like. It mixes it up and the kid's got a bit of a fair bit of raw talent. So I'd love to see him come in because I think he can add a bit um, to us as well. But um, it looks like, you know, Liz out. So Sam Skinner, if he, he's, he, by all accounts, is going to do it. Now, I saw a fair bit of him last year at South Adelaide and he was in real good touch. Uh, terrific overhead mark, takes a courageous mark, reads it well. Um, and he's a p- pretty good kick as well. So there's a, there's a lot to like about him. So if he got his chance, I don't think he would let us down in any of those areas. So um, and it could could work out quite nicely. And, and you know, besides um, Aaliyah McKenzie, probably won't come up. I reckon he'd be too sore to play. So we've got to probably look uh, at uh, a replacement there too. So it's been a bit bit tough uh, a couple of weeks with the with you know the Cleary surprise because he finished off the game. Um, in the trial game against the Crows. And then he's had to have uh, a slight knee surgery. But, yeah, we've had a few blows in, in that area. So hopefully we're able to cover those off and be able to bounce back and, and have a, a good win. I, I just think the spirit of the atmosphere on Saturday night just won't allow them to lay down. I just don't think there will be a moment of thought for yourself on Saturday night. I think that they will be carried by the spirit that's going to be in that ground. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. Um, the the way we're just going to come out, we might uh, you know, just feel all the emotion from all the fans. You know, it's a full capacity crowd that we haven't had in in two years now. Um, to to get back all together, celebrate what was a wonderful life, and have uh, the spirit of Russ in that ground. Hello, I reckon we might have the quickest start we've ever had since uh, twenty fifteen when we pumped the Hawks in the first quarter, like uh, we did. I think it was twenty, yeah, twenty fifteen, round four. I remember that game. Yeah. Do you um, how loud do you reckon never tear us apart will be? Incredibly. Oh. I'll get well, one I'll of my scared. migraines. I get migraines at Adelaide <laughs> when the crowd's very loud. First showdown, I still remember it. My head was killing me. So I'm expecting, <laughs> I'm expecting it to be like that. The games against Hawthorne Adelaide Oval have been so fun. Oh, it's been a lot of fun ones. So I, I think the same thing. I think we're going to come out the blocks and just blow them out the water from the get-go. I, yeah, so anyway. I think a quick start would be good, um, as well as just... And you mentioned uh, Josh Sin. Just quickly, Timmy, you would have seen a lot of him, especially in the trial, and you mentioned his long kicking. Is that going to come into a, a pretty positive aspect for our game plan 
even not even against Hawthorne, just throughout the year? I like um, if, if especially, and I, Mitch didn't have a great night on Saturday night, but his trial form was reasonable. I, I like him deep, and the thing about a, a quick, long entry allows Mitch sometimes a bit of a runner, and if he gets anywhere near it, we know he can jump on their shoulders and take hangers. It, it, uh, he's a very good one-on-one player as well. And uh, on the weekend, I thought he was beaten because he lost front position too often. And Adams dominated him from in front. And he can't allow that to happen um, again uh, with any opponent. But, you know, you're young, you keep learning. But I think if he's positioned one-on-one and you get a long entry and he's got any chance at it one-on-one, I think he's a very good player and he can do that. So I think it suits him in that scenario. So that's why I like it. Uh, hello, Dan Houston. Did you like? Did you love? I oh, absolutely loved. What a game! Yeah. What what a game! Stood head and shoulders above all rest. I'd, he was going to be my um, pick for our um, new segment, actually. Uh, Ant. Oh, that's coming up in a second. Oh, I will get to that in a sec. I just want to ask Timmy: Are you back for the half time this year, mate? Yes, please. Well, um, there was some discussion about uh, you know whether the fans wanted it or not. Um, so they didn't ask him, which is great, so I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. <laughs> don't, don't ever ask. Don't ever ask. It just happens. <laughs> oh, that's insane. Oh, so, uh, hey. You'll see me Saturday night. Beautiful. Timmy, uh, have you done the halftime? Uh, the, not the halftime, the... Uh... The first goal of the game yet? No, no, I haven't because oh. normally I'm, I'm broadcasting the game, so it makes it a little bit dif- uh, difficult. But um, I'm sure uh, there'll be obviously a tribute night for me at some stage, and uh, <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll look forward to kicking my own goal <laughs> at my own tribute game. So it'll be terrific. Yeah, I'll look forward to we, we, can, we can start that campaign, Timmy. <laughs> get, get Timmy his first goal of the game. Uh, we have the power. I've actually thought about it myself. I thought, you know, I might dodge, weave, run around and try and snap it over my head. And I thought, <laughs> it's only, it can only end in tears. It would only end in tears. I'd do a hammy or slip, you know, arm <laughs> over turkey. It would just be a disaster. So um, I'm pretty happy that I'm in the commentary box. <laughs> Surely try a barrel though, maybe. Just have a oh, oh, barrel yeah. for 50. I don't think it was McGo even when I was Anthony's age, Jack. So. <laughs> uh. Uh, all right, let's we'll quickly do some tips and then we'll move on. Hutto, your tip for the uh, blockbuster on Saturday night? Port by 45. Oh, Timmy? That's a good win. Uh, yeah, Port 39. I'm very similar. Port by 37. I think uh, a lot of sevens are going to be out on Saturday night. So uh, we'll have one. Seven, a 37 or 107. You know, either way, it would be very good. So... Um, I look forward to uh, uh, seeing you on the big screens Saturday night, Timmy. And Hutto, I'm sure we'll see your face all over the place on Saturday night. Um, let's go into a brand new segment for the first time ever on Pairs on the Pod. It's Pair of the Week, Hutto. Mm. So I get a start, so that's good. That means I can take Dan Houston. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought I'd give you the rundown because, you know, you've already hinted at it. So uh, away you go, Matt. Oh, it was incredible seeing him push up the ground. And this is, I think, what we saw. We wanted to see a lot more of last year before he injured himself. So he's really just... T- he almost won us the game. Yeah. Really. What do you have? I think it was like 36 and 2. Mm. Yep. So it's like, that is an incredible game. That's like, if you kept that up for the rest of the year, we'd have back-to-back ground like medalists. So um, cool. he was very good. And I think it's a role that suits him. We do have an abundance of 1,001 halfbacks. So... It's good to see him move up to the wing. Similar with um, Riley Bonner. He's another one um, that's been that's benefited moving up the field, I thought, a bit more. But, yeah, Dan Houston is my pair of the week. Timmy G, did you have a pair player that you uh, that you loved seeing on Saturday night? Yeah, I, Dan was outstanding. I agree with Jack. Um, the guy I thought was probably, um, what would you say, under the radar, was, was Burton. I thought the job he did on Cameron was amazing. And he got ripped off in that marking comp, comp uh, you know, that one where he both 
yeah. it appeared both hands hit the ball and almost spiked it up and Charlie grabbed it and quickly wrapped it in. Now, if I was Charlie, I'd do the same thing and mm -hmm. make out it was mine. But the umpire <laughs> fell for it. That's what I can't believe. But besides that, I thought Ryan Burton held him all night and, and has done a very good job on him before. So I thought uh, Ryan Burton was my pair of the week. <laughs> I love that. Mine was Travis Bike. Oh, of I, course um, it is. Of course yeah. it is. <laughs> Not because of biasness or the sheer love I have for the man. It's because he's rolling on 33 and still getting 33 touches and kicking a goal. And besides Houston was probably one of the best of the night. So uh, it's not going to be a running joke that Bokey's my pair of the week every week. But I it thought I'd kick be. off a year, right? I, I think it, yeah, it could be. It's going <laughs> yes. to be. Don't be it's, it's, I'll tell you, Anthony, it's been good. Uh, the fact that he's been, um, because of the, the game time and what's they have forcing him forward and he's been kicking goals so it's good it's great that he's up there and because he's smart and he's able to get hold of it and and uh and create goals out of nothing so it, it's good he hit the scoreboard a couple of times against the crows in the trial game and he, he kicked another one on the weekend so yeah i'd like to see that keep happening as well it's good yeah, I, I enjoy, enjoy both kicking kicking goals. Goals. It, it makes me feel good about myself and, and yeah, everyone else, I'm assuming, but I'm just purely being selfish here. Um, <laughs> let's go into, speaking of the best players from last week, our favourite pairs, but let's go into players that have been a bit different, a bit odd, haven't seen a lot of, and we call this the obscure player of the week, Port Adelaide style. Hutto, let's kick you off again, mate. You might as well. This is your favourite segment that uh, we've got, I think. Yep, so he played a total of 21 games for Port Adelaide before crossing the cult um, from 06 to 08. It is, of course, Greg Bentley for the Braves <laughs> for 41 and then changed it to 22 for his last season. But, um, yeah, my favourite um, sort of memory, Greg Bentley, first game playing up in uh, Darwin against the Western Bulldogs when we used to go up oh, there yes. every season in the stinking hot. Um, but while the game was sort of in the balance, the Bulldogs were coming home hard in that second quarter, like really pushing us. They took the lead after we had a very good openings term. He kicked the goal to steady the ship. They kicked four in a row, but Greg Bentley stood up tall and delivered. So Greg Bentley is my obscure player of the week. Far oh, yeah. out. That's tough. And you mentioned that to me a couple of days ago, actually, through DM, and I was thinking, far out. I haven't heard that name in a while. <laughs> he had, he had, he had, to, to be fair, fair, he had, had more Guernsey sales, sales than Bentley did, did as a car, car company in Australia. So that's that's a good thing <laughs> a um, to hear. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, Jimmy, uh, Jack, Jimmy, Jack, Jack yeah. was he number 41? He was 41. He wore 41 yeah. and then he moved yeah. into the 22. Yeah, there you go. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Timmy, by the way, I wear number 41. So uh, I've got a good resignation ah. for 41. Well, well. Um, with me, but uh, who's your obscure player of the week, Timmy? Well, I'm going for a guy that played, and I've got his little record up here because I like it. Uh, I like this uh, little segment. Um, played from 05 to 08 for Port and then went to Richmond, but played 28 games for the Power, 16 goals, and he was a real hard nut and actually had to stop playing the game because of concussion, so you like that in a Port Adelaide player. Um, his name was Adam Thompson. Oh, and, uh, yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it was a hard, bloody hard nut. And I was sort of a bit disappointed when he um, he got sort of traded to Richmond because um, I liked him. And then years later, we ended up working together and because uh, oh. he, he played for Sturt in the um, SNFL. And I thought he you know, must have been a, um, a Sturt barracker growing up. But I found out later in life he was a Port barracker. Oh, so, awesome. yeah, he actually followed the Maggies and he brought in his Guernsey and, and I'll, I'll find the photo of me and him together, but it was about, you know, about that big, his Guernsey. So he must have been like one or two years of age and it had a number two on it. Oh, that's oh. awesome. <laughs> he loved Daryl Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. Oh, yeah, let me down gently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that actually oh. reminds me. I remember a couple of years ago, I was doing the end of season Guernsey sales, yeah. and it was just after the year Jimmy Chumpers had joined. 
And of course, he had the number 18. So it's got all the match worn Guernseys. And poor old Tom. So a few blokes are picking it up, going, Oh, yeah, I've got Kane's Guernsey. And they're just like, Kane retired last year, mate. So they chucked <laughs> him back on the pile. Oh, no. I was oh, like, no. That's horrible. That's not nice at all. Uh, well, who's yours, poor Tom. Um, Mine is another Sturt boy, actually. And um, he was. Looking at his profile here, was 51 in the 2004 draft. Played four games in total. And he had lo- lovely, luscious hair. His name was Ben Eckerman. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 13, I reckon. Yeah, number 13. And I remember his last game as well, because they played, I think it was at Amy Stadium, and he just got clean knocked out. And we never saw him again. Mm. And it was, was such quite, a shame. He was quite a light build, wasn't he? he was, and, yeah. Uh, he was quite quick, yeah. He was um, very entertaining. And I thought, you know, he was going to be, oh, the next, oh, I don't know. He was just this young little player running around. I'm thinking, oh, my God, I like you. Number 13 as well. Hasn't been a lot of 13s that have gone all the way for Port Adelaide. So True, yeah. I think uh, In the uh, AFL? I'm trying to think. Was Danny Morton our first? Could be right, yeah. I reckon Danny Morton in 97, 98. I reckon he might have been number 13 before he nearly broke his neck. Well, he did break his neck, actually. Yeah. Oh. Um, they, hey, I've just wasted another obscure play. <laughs> <laughs> that's, right. that's yours next week, Timmy. That's yours next <laughs> week. Too. Love that. That's our obscure players. And now we go to an obscure player that played plenty of football for Port Adelaide. Hello and I's love child. Stephen Salapek in a segment we like to call Better Call Sal. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we recall our favourite Stephen Salapek memories. And Timmy, you would have been on the, uh, I quote, inner sanctum around the time Sal was er- around. And I will kick off with you, mate. Give us a Stephen Salapek moment. Yeah, I, and I reckon it was Football Park and might have been a, oh, maybe his first or second game. And um, he ran back with the flight of the ball opposite way and went straight through and took the mark and still kept going and eventually came to a bit of a crash when the players eventually got there. But you don't know what's coming. And that, for me, just straight away, I said, right, he can play for Port Adelaide, no problems at all. And it was a really gutsy mark, really gutsy mark. And it was sort of the first time I'd seen him play a full game and I thought, wow, that's really impressive. But uh, met him later on, of course, and uh, and Sal's a terrific fellow, really good bloke. And he loved his time uh, at Paul too. Yeah, I, I, he was. It's it's sad that his injuries um, were in the way a lot because I reckon if he had a clean run at it, he was going to be one of the better players to play for Port. Um, Hutto, yeah, you, I think your memory actually links in with Timmy G's. Uh, second game, it's a little bit different, I would say. He's running back with the flight, but he's got an interesting look. Oh, this is this is quite funny. Timmy's not praised him, saying how great he was going back with the flight of the ball. <laughs> My distinct memory is first game of 2004. We smashed the life out of Essendon, and the post game presser, or post game like chat, I think Chad Corns absolutely savaged him about his hair because I think he had. <laughs> Blonde streaks he did. Go, yeah. going through it, and I think Chad just said basically that is shit house. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's just absolutely ripped him. Going, yeah, we need to have a chat with him about that. But that was something that just stood out. It's just like, yeah, he's he just had a very interesting haircut for that one game, and I think it disappeared quick. Smart. <laughs> I love it. He that did. Would, he did muck would. around with his hair a bit. I give you that. Yeah. <laughs> He'd suit the today's was, game, Timmy. It happens quite a bit. Yeah, true, true. That was back in the time where uh, a lot of hairdos at Port Adelaide weren't the, uh, weren't the standouts. Mm. You know, a lot of clean cuts and very yeah. professional. And nowadays we've got mullets and whatever DBJ's running with. I'm not sure. But um, mm. my You're memory... You're see Dante Vicentini's hair, mate. That is something uh, special. Yeah. Oh, what? I'll run with it. Oh, I respect it. <laughs> When you've got the name Dante, I'm all yours, mate. Yeah, it's a great name. It. Um, I'll go similar to Timmy G's path. I reckon he running back with the flight. It was 2007. It was a quali final against West Coast. He did the same thing earlier in the year against Hawthorne and got cleaned. 
Like, he didn't come back on. He was, I think he was out for a month or something afterwards. And then plays in the quarterfinal, does the same thing, takes a great running back with a flight mark. And it's in the last quarter and kicks a goal to put us pretty much in front in a game where I think nine goals won us the game. So for Sal to do that in, in the career best year that was 2007 is why the great man, is, is, he's got so much love from me. If his name was Travis Boak, it would be the perfect package. But, <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love Stephen Salopec. The perfect pair. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to send this to him because he'd be loving this, Sal. He would be <laughs> loving it. So, yeah, this is a good segment for him. Our, our aim at some point, Timmy, is we've got to get him on the show. Uh, I'll, I'll get I'll get hold of his number for you. I'll get oh, of you're a legend. Oh, don't get hard on like that. It could happen, man. It could happen. We, imagine Sal talking about his favourite Sal moment. <laughs> what? And, and don't worry. He'll do it. He'll Excellent. Do it. He'll, he'll be Excellent. Oh, oh, that'll, be great. that'll be great. He'll love that. Um, just quickly before we finish up as well, we've had some fantastic chats tonight, Timmy. Really appreciate your time joining us on our first ever edition of our podcast that we planned within 24 hours. So it's great to have you on board as the first guest. What's happening with you, mate? What's happening this year? A lot of plans going on. Uh, have a bit of me time for you. What's been happening? <laughs> oh, yeah, you get through from one week to the other. I did say the other day... Um, <laughs> I can't afford any lockdowns or anything like that because footy's back. Footy's back. You, yeah. you, you've got me till the end of September and, you know, just locked it. I'm, I'm in my own lockdown as far as footy goes. So <laughs> it's as simple as that. But it, it is a busy time, but I love it. And it makes the uh, makes the winter go quick. It's the only thing I've ever liked about winter was footy. As simple as that. So, no, it's, it's look, it's a busy life. We've got... Uh, we had three kids. We've now got two grandkids who are twins, so a little uh, boy, a little girl, um, four years of age. So um, they, and that's why I set this up for eight thirty because we get them out of the house by eight <laughs> thirty. <laughs> Otherwise, this interview would not be able to go ahead. Uh, and they love sit, sitting on these sort of uh, meetings. And I remember once during lockdown, um, my son is uh, engineer had to go on site because they um, they were allowed to back then, and uh, I had to look after the two just for three hours. And I said, look, I'll do it, but I've got to do meetings and all that. And uh, I'm on one of these. And anyway, the girl had gone to the toilet and I could hear that wasn't going too well. And I'm in this <laughs> manager's meeting like this. And then the lad's doing something over there. I said, listen, you're going to have to give me five. I have to go and check out what's going out. Because, you know, if you turn your back on them, mate, it's like turning your back on the ocean. You're going to get hurt. So <laughs> I get to <laughs> I get to the tour and it is a dead set mess. It, oh, it's bits and pieces everywhere, you name it. I thought, oh, fair income. So I've got to clean all this up. So I'm cleaning all this up. It takes me about five or six minutes. And as I come back, the little fella has plonked himself in the chair <laughs> in the manager's meeting <laughs> <laughs> and is holding court. And I couldn't believe I get there. They're all packing themselves, laughing. And I said, I said, how did he go? They said, he made a lot more sense than you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So oh. They, just give you, they just give you those great light moments. And, you know, probably to finish up, that was what Russell and I had a really great connection when I had my grandkids and he was telling me all about his. And it's one of those moments where you probably don't talk about it unless you've got them. And, you know, it was just like this great connection for us. And he said, oh, Timmy, they're a love like you'll never have. And I said, yeah, they're, it's, a, it's an amazing uh, love. It's different than your own and it's just another level. So, uh, but that was a great connection that we used to have and be able to tell each other great stories about them. Oh, that's, that's a perfect way to finish, I think, Hutto, because I don't think we could top it anyway ourselves because I think we'd ramble on for another 15 minutes about Stephen Salopec, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hado, any final thoughts, mate? Any any last questions for Timmy as well? Um, can't the pair, but also can't the Maggies on Saturday morning taking on the Crowies in a SNFL trial. So hopefully two wins before we enter the SNFL season next week as well. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that starts next week. Friday night showdowns as well. Yes. That's going to well, be I'm, massive. I'm, I'm hearing uh, renovations at the club uh coming along unbelievably and it's gonna be 
it's going to be a very, very nice venue to watch uh, the Maggies from in, in uh, the near future. So they're sort of saying mid middle of May, so it's going to be very exciting when we get to that first home game up, up in that grandstand. It's going to be fantastic. Gee, that'd be lining up perfectly with the club's birthday, May 12th. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that'd be a great time to launch it. I'd, and I, you, you can go into the to the port store now and you can get a little bit of a glimpse of what's happening because they've got the big, and they were wharf pylons um, that they were able to get hold of. They've got some of that in the structure already and that's mm. going to be it throughout the whole wow. brand. So it's going to be amazing. And they've got this, this old... Um, uh, timber from the, the wharf itself and they've been able to put it into slats into certain areas and it's going to be on the decking it's just like it's going to have the authenticity as well oh, that's what that's i love cool. about it you've got you've got over 100 year old sort of timber there from the wharf i mean what better how good is that? <laughs> it's gonna be that, awesome that's gonna be awesome that's awesome that's incredible and a lot of money will be spent down there hardo uh yeah yeah that's on top of what i've already spent down there <laughs> yeah, we had to fund it to begin with, didn't we, Hunter? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of cancers I have hanging up uh, is unhealthy. <laughs> Love it. You're going to have to get a uh, port coffee table as well, Hutto. I've tried. I'm, I'm in negotiations. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Timmy, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you tonight, mate. I'm unreal amount of stories to be told, and I'm sure plenty more to come over the rest of the week. Mate, it's a real pleasure to chat to you and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, listen, boys, I really have appreciated it. And I didn't do this on purpose because people come to my house sometimes and if they haven't been here before, they, they walk around. And Chris McDermott did this one day, came over and uh, he was looking through the house. And I thought, what's he doing? And he's looking around, he goes, all right, where is it? Where's the shrine? Where is it? <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? He said, where's all the medals? Where's all the bloody trophies? What's going on? And I said, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't actually know. I know the medals are in a shopping bag somewhere. <laughs> and I said, also, the, the Guernseys, I've got, I know I've got them in the house, but I'm not sure exactly where. Um, so I can't show you either. And people expect you to have, like, you know, paraphernalia going on. Well, the other day I was having a meeting and this was just a little bit tilted. Now, you may see there's a bit of a trophy yes. up in the corner there, right? Hello. And they went, oh, wow, is that a footy trophy, rah, rah? No, but it is my pride and joy. Um, it is the father-son uh, Claire tour that happens once a year. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's been going 10 years and I finally won it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes, Timmy. And uh, it's it's quite pride and joy that I've got because for ten years I've been playing and the swine sometimes have been overnight leader, sometimes you know, I've been close and they go, Oh, here he is. You know what they've been calling me? Well numbers, because they reckon I just make up the numbers. <laughs> oh numbers, uh, Geneva. Numbers, Geneva. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible along with some hey diddle as well just to oh beauty oh yeah beautiful look after the boys hey diddle beautiful all right uh, i better go boys thanks for thank that timmy thanks appreciate for that. it mate great great best. talk the first and last podcast brilliant <laughs> <laughs> that's it this one's staying on the ground <laughs> oh beautiful uh, thanks, Cheers, Timmy. Timmy. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys.